tragic tale of Mastin Milamu Wanjala, confessions of a teenage serial killer who claimed 12 young lives, beginning his heinous acts at age 16, preying on victims his own age. Early life and background of a teenage serial killer who claimed 12 young lives. Mastin Milamo Wanjala was born in 2001 in Bungoma, a rural county in western Kenya. Bungoma, characterized by its lush landscapes and agricultural economy, was a quiet and serene place where communities thrived on farming and close-knit relationships. However, beneath the surface of this tranquil setting, Wanjala's life was anything but peaceful. Growing up in a modest household, Wanjala's childhood was marked by struggles. His parents, like many in the region, worked tirelessly to make ends meet. Despite their efforts, the family faced financial hardships, which often left young Wanjala feeling neglected and marginalized. These early experiences of deprivation and the harsh realities of rural life began to shape his worldview and psyche. As a child, Wanjala was described by neighbors and acquaintances as a quiet and introverted boy. He rarely engaged in playful activities with his peers and often seemed lost in his thoughts. This detachment from the community was an early indicator of the isolation he felt, an isolation that would later manifest in darker ways. As Wanjala transitioned into adolescence, his behavior began to change. The quiet and introverted boy became increasingly withdrawn and secretive. His academic performance, already below average, deteriorated further, and he started skipping school. It was during this period that he began to exhibit signs of deviant behavior. In his teenage years, Wanjala left Bungoma and moved to Nairobi, Kenya's bustling capital. Nairobi, with its sprawling urban landscape and diverse population, presented a stark contrast to the rural life he had known. The city's fast-paced life and the anonymity it offered allowed Wanjala to explore the darker aspects of his personality without the scrutiny of a close-knit community. In Nairobi, Wanjala's descent into criminal activities began. He initially engaged in petty crimes, such as theft and vandalism. However, these small-scale offenses were only a precursor to the more heinous acts he would later commit. His early encounters with the criminal underworld of Nairobi introduced him to a life of violence and manipulation, which he embraced with alarming ease. The start of a killing spree. By 2019, Wanjala had transformed into a predator, targeting vulnerable young boys in Nairobi. His modus operandi was chillingly calculated. Posing as a football coach, he gained the trust of these boys, luring them with promises of mentorship and sporting opportunities. Football, being a popular sport in Kenya, provided Wanjala with the perfect cover. Parents and children alike were eager to believe in the prospects of a better future through sports. Wanjala's ability to manipulate his victims and their families was a testament to his cunning nature. He would approach boys in public places such as playgrounds, schools, and football fields, offering them training sessions and the hope of becoming professional players. Once he gained their trust, he would drug them, rendering them defenseless, and subsequently carry out his gruesome acts. Over the course of two years, Wanjala admitted to drugging and murdering more than 10 boys. His methods were not only brutal, but also ritualistic. In a twisted display of dominance and control, he confessed to drinking the blood of some of his victims. This macabre detail highlighted the depths of his depravity and the psychological torment he inflicted on his victims. Uncovering the Horrors the extent of Wanjala's crimes began to unravel when police started investigating the disappearances of several young boys in Nairobi. The city's residents were gripped by fear and outrage as news of the missing children spread. Parents were terrified to let their children out of their sight, and the authorities faced immense pressure to solve the case. The breakthrough came when Wanjala was apprehended on July 14, 2021. His arrest marked the beginning of the end of his reign of terror. During interrogations, Wanjala led the police to various locations where he had disposed of the bodies. The recovery of the remains of at least four victims provided tangible evidence of his monstrous acts. Each discovery added to the horror. Two of the victims had been strangled, their lives cut short by the hands of a man they had trusted. Another had succumbed to head injuries, a testament to the violence inflicted upon him. The cause of death for the fourth child could not be established, 
but the circumstances surrounding their demise were equally harrowing. The revelation of these details sent shockwaves through the community and the nation at large. The media extensively covered the case, and Wanjala's name became synonymous with evil. His actions not only shattered families, but also instilled a sense of insecurity and mistrust within society. Uncovering the Horrors The extent of Wanjala's crimes began to unravel when police started investigating the disappearances of several young boys in Nairobi. The city's residents were gripped by fear and outrage as news of the missing children spread. Parents were terrified to let their children out of their sight, and the authorities faced immense pressure to solve the case. The breakthrough came when Wanjala was apprehended on July 14, 2021. His arrest marked the beginning of the end of his reign of terror. During interrogations, Wanjala led the police to various locations where he had disposed of the bodies. The recovery of the remains of at least four victims provided tangible evidence of his monstrous acts. Each discovery added to the horror. Two of the victims had been strangled, their lives cut short by the hands of a man they had trusted. Another had succumbed to head injuries, a testament to the violence inflicted upon him. The cause of death for the fourth child could not be established, but the circumstances surrounding their demise were equally harrowing. The revelation of these details sent shockwaves through the community and the nation at large. The media extensively covered the case, and Wanjala's name became synonymous with evil. His actions not only shattered families, but also instilled a sense of insecurity and mistrust within society. The Arrest and Escape Following his arrest, Wanjala was held at the Jagu Road Police Station in Nairobi. The authorities prepared to formally charge him with multiple counts of murder, and the judicial process was set to begin. However, an unexpected turn of events unfolded, adding another layer of complexity to the case. On the night of October 13, 2021, Wanjala managed to escape from police custody. The circumstances of his escape were shrouded in mystery and controversy. The three police officers on duty that night claimed there had been a power cut at the station, which facilitated Wanjala's escape. This explanation, however, was met with skepticism and outrage from the public. The officers were subsequently arraigned on charges of allowing and assisting his escape. The incident raised questions about the security protocols at the police station and the potential involvement of corrupt practices. It also highlighted the desperation and cunning of Wanjala, who was willing to go to any lengths to avoid facing justice. The Manhunt and Lynching Wanjala's escape triggered a massive manhunt. The authorities, under immense pressure from the public and the media, mobilized all available resources to recapture him. The fear that he might continue his killing spree loomed large, and the community's demand for justice grew louder. Two days after his escape, on October 15, 2021, Wanjala's flight from justice came to a violent end. He was discovered in Makwea, Bungoma County, his hometown, where his parents still lived. News of his presence spread rapidly, and an enraged mob quickly formed. The community, driven by a mix of fear, anger, and a desire for retribution, took matters into their own hands. Wanjala was lynched by the mob, beaten to death in a brutal act of vigilante justice. His parents, upon learning of his crimes and his presence in the area, publicly disowned him. Their disavowal was a profound expression of the shame and revulsion they felt towards their son's actions. The lynching of Wanjala was met with mixed reactions. While some saw it as a form of immediate justice for the unspeakable crimes he had committed, others viewed it as a failure of the legal system to uphold the rule of law. The incident underscored the deep-seated issues of trust in the justice system and the community's desperation for safety and closure. Reflections on a Tragic Life Mastin Milamu Wanjala's life was a tragic tale of a young man who descended into unimaginable darkness. From his troubled childhood in Bungoma to his violent end, his story is a reflection of the broader societal issues that can lead individuals down a path of crime and violence. Wanjala's early years, marked by neglect and deprivation, planted the seeds of his later actions. His move to Nairobi and subsequent immersion in the city's criminal underworld further corrupted his already fragile psyche. 
His ability to manipulate and deceive highlighted the dangerous potential for individuals with ill intentions to exploit societal vulnerabilities. The community's reaction to his crimes, culminating in his lynching, was a stark reminder of the fragile balance between justice and retribution. While the desire for immediate justice is understandable, it also raises important questions about the role of the legal system and the dangers of taking the law into one's own hands. Lessons and Moving Forward The case of Mastin Milamu Wanjala serves as a grim reminder of the importance of early intervention and support for at-risk individuals. Addressing the root causes of crime, such as poverty, lack of education, and psychological trauma, is crucial in preventing such tragic outcomes. Additionally, the need for a robust and trustworthy legal system cannot be overstated. Ensuring that justice is served through lawful means is essential in maintaining societal order and preventing the cycle of violence and retribution. For the families of the victims, the pain and loss they have endured are immeasurable. Their lives have been forever altered by the actions of one man. As they seek to heal, it is important for the community and the nation to offer support and solidarity, acknowledging their suffering and working towards a safer future for all children. In the end, the story of Mastin Milamo Wanjala is a sobering reflection of the complexities of human nature, the impact of societal failures, and the dire consequences of unchecked evil. It is a story that calls for introspection, action, and a collective commitment to preventing such tragedies from happening again.